Um, let me switch a little bit to challenges. Um, obviously, data is at the core of um, uh, ADA. Any technical or business challenges as you were building uh, the product, as it relates to data, whether internally or with the product? And how does ADA integrate when it comes to data with customers' data and vice versa, customers using ADA's data on their end? Yeah, sure. We, um, so we, we integrate uh, very deeply and many of our clients are large enterprise brands who you know, have their own data warehouses or data lakes. And we have a, a great data API that allows you to pipe all your data from ADA into whatever system you, you like. Um, at the same time, we also enable our brands to leverage their existing customer experience data into ADA right away. Uh, so you know, many, many of our clients have built a large repository, for example, of help center articles they'd like to take advantage of. Um, you know, we, we have a, 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 um, a product called Smart Search, which allows you to, out of the box, uh, uh, essentially tap into that historical knowledge that you've developed um, and present it in a conversational experience. That's been something that's been very, very valuable for our brands to get started quickly and to understand which of this content's actually valuable. What, what's, mm. what's useful about this content? What business result is it driving? And that relates to Pierre, your question. You know, I, I think that the, the, the subjectiveness of customer experience is something that we did encounter in the earlier days. We actually found uh, dissolve quite quickly uh, with through our focus on, on connecting automation to real business results, meaning cost savings and revenue generation, hard dollars. Mm -hmm. um, you know, many of the, I would argue many of the customer experience metrics uh, that teams prior to deploying an automation strategy uh, tend to measure their success or, uh, around are really end up being proxies. In some cases, you know, they're, they're quite, quite, um, they're quite large abstractions, let's say, uh, from revenue or, or savings. And, um, and I think the, the, the extent to which you can get closer to, to revenue, um, the, the better. That's where we've seen the most success and our brands uh, get, the, get the best results. And it leads them to think about their customer experience in a, in a whole new way. The minute you get closer to revenue you know, yeah. is, the, is the minute that you start to abandon many of these, uh, I would argue, antiquated definitions around customer experience. Um, you know, you, when, when you know how much, how much you're able to increase your customer lifetime value via each interaction that you're, you're facilitating with your customer base, you start to realize you want more of those customer interactions and not fewer of them. Were there, yeah. were there sorry, any cultural challenges in making people to move from managing their proxies to managing the real metrics? Oh, de definitely. Um, you know, I'd say they're, they're one of the probably most exciting things about ADA to this day uh, is when our clients create their first ACX teams called, these are automated customer experience teams. Mm -hmm. And these are typically teams that are um, that are initially seated with with uh, members of the contact center. So our mm -hmm. a brand will will promote the top two or three agents out of their contact center and promote them into this new automation role in the ACX team, where they're living inside Ada and they're managing automated workflows, learning from them, improving them over time. And that's a huge cultural shift, one that you know we see so much career excitement around. Uh, because the it's a new role. It's one that is uh, we're, we're we're seeing really explode. I think there's going to be um, an increasing number of ACX manager positions that we'll all be congratulating people for on LinkedIn if you're not already. Um, and uh, and I think pay, sort of sort of paves the way to the future of of what customer experience is and how it's becoming increasingly uh, analytical and data driven. Um, so that, that's that's one cultural uh, one cultural shift that we've we've observed, and I'm I'm excited to see continue. That's interesting. Yeah, I get reminded of a science fiction novel I read from one of my favorite authors, uh, Stephen Baxter, where he describes a software engineer developer of the future sitting in a room with AI and babysitting and nursing and almost acting as a psychologist, communicating with the AI to create to let the AI solve a problem as opposed to the engineer writing the code to solve the problem directly. Right? <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's a. I love that too. I think that that's um, that's a, actually a great metaphor. You know, in my view, most software today, I think we can think of as really being like SaaS 1.0. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's built around human labor. Um, yeah. You know, pick a, so a, a, a software uh, app. The, the amount of time that you spend clicking and dragging and, and performing the equivalent of digital manual labor um, is immense. And what we're transitioning to uh, is the SaaS 2.0 world, where the, where the human labor is being promoted to a far more strategic role. And the core of the software is an ML model or multiple ML models. And that's a really exciting future, I think, because it, it, it's only now that we're beginning to really see the impact, the tr I think, of software on our productivity and our creativity as humans. Um, you know, we, we, we saw the digitization, we, we put things in the cloud, yeah. but the human's still at the core. We're about to see the human promoted to a far more strategic role with ML at, at the core. And I think that's going to be a, a very, a very exciting future for our relationship with software.